The city of St. Petersburg has been well known throughout history as a trade gateway for Russia. And of course today, connectivity is the key word for any economy to thrive. And it seems Russia knows this very well. The Eurasian Economic Corridor is one of those examples. Russia is linking itself with the rest of the region. And it wants to involve China every step of the way as an important partner. On those points, I asked Li Baodong, the Secretary General of the Boal Forum for Asia, on all of these issues. Let's listen in. Mr. Secretary General, what a pleasure to have you here in St. Petersburg. Good to be here. It's great to see you again after Boahao, and now we are in St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. So I want to begin by asking you, Mr. Secretary General, some of the profound questions. People have been asking questions about whether we want to have more open the world or closed the world, whether we want to have win-win situation or zero-sum game, whether we want to have innovation or old mentality. As someone seasoned diplomat and now Secretary General of Boal Forum for Asia, what do you think? Uh, the main kind is, uh, is a community of, uh, of shared uh, future. And all countries should uh, get rid of uh, zero-sum game mentality and uh, should uh, embrace uh, innovation, cooperation to uh, work together to find uh, the growth, new, new growth drivers. Mm. And I think it's very really impor important for the countries to, to be together and uh, to come up with new ideas to make sure that the globalization is more open, uh, inclusive, and also balanced. And also make sure that uh, its uh, benefits are shared by all. Mm. You know, Boal uh, Forum for Asia is a China-based uh, uh, high-profile international forum. And uh, at this uh, annual conference, uh, we had a great uh, discussion under the theme of uh, open uh, Asia, uh, open innovative Asia for a world of uh, greater uh, prosperity. Mm. And also we were very, very honored that uh, President Xi Jinping came over and also he dressed the opening ceremony. And uh, he made a um, you know, marvelous, very impressive statement. And uh, he uh, just uh, real, you know, confirmed uh, the Chinese government's commitment to open economy. For many years, you know, we have seen uh, multilateralism is a challenge. And uh, there are many uh, opinions, many comments, even books on that. Uh, in my view, uh, the key question uh, is the functioning of uh, a global mechanism. Uh, is not uh, adapted to the changing uh, reality of globalization and uh, even uh, uh, left far behind. Yes. Uh, on economic front, uh, you know, with the end of the Cold War, uh, globalization has entered into its new era and uh, its uh, complexity and uh, also uh, uncertainties, consequences uh, have been underestimated uh, or uh, ignored intentionally or unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And it's a very complicated question. Development model cannot be imposed uh, yes. by saber. Mm. Good governance cannot be transplanted by all sectors. Right. If you look at China and Russia, Mr. Secretary General, there are a lot of things happening. Right now we have St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. The Vice President of China, Mr. Wang Qishan, is here to attend. Later, likely President Putin coming from Russia going to visit China on a state visit. And then later there will be a CO summit being held in Qingdao in China. So you see a lot of interactions between the two sides. People wonder though, Mr. Secretary General, what exactly is the nature of this bilateral relations now Russia and China, particularly current stage. Well, China and Russia, you know, they are very close, close uh, neighbors, and also uh, they are major uh, emerging uh, market economies in the world. 
uh, they, uh, they make, uh, I think, uh, their own contributions to the world growth. And also, uh, in their own ways, uh, they promote the peace, stability, and also the development uh, with their bilateral ties with other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, are many, uh, there are many ways that both countries can work together to make contributions to peace, stability. Both countries, they are the permanent members of the Security Council. So uh, they uh, worked very hard to uh, safeguard the role and authority of the UN and also to uphold uh, uh, the UN Charter. Are you talking about Syria? The, are you talking no, about I'm, DPRK? Are you talking about what exactly are you, you know, referring on, to? On, on these you know, hot spot issues, both countries work very closely with each other and uh, to give uh, solutions, to make contribution to the solutions of regional and, uh, and international hotspot issues, as, yes, sir, as, the as, as the issues you mentioned, uh, Syria and also DPRK nuclear uh, uh, issue. You served in the UN as the ambassador to the UN for quite some time. What is your working relationship with the Russian ambassador to the UN? How is that consultation going on between the two of you? You know, we have very close consultation with our Russian colleagues and also with other uh, uh, other uh, countries, uh, members of the uh, Security Council, mm. and uh, so there are uh, regular consultations, and uh, you know, UN is, is a very very special forum, yes. and uh, not it's not just a talk shop. So sometimes you have to come up with some idea to to maybe to form to develop uh, a Security Council resolution. So there must be very close consultations among all the members of the Security Council. Mm. Uh, but uh, it's extremely important that China and Russia you know, be together. And uh, we, we look at th that the things from decent, different perspectives, but with one goal, that is to provide a good solution to address international issues, to promote peace stability in the world. And China and Russia are also uh, uh, major players and also the members of G20, BRICS, and, and also APEC. And uh, uh, strongly, vigorously, both countries uh, uh, advocate the free trade, open economy, and uh, uh, believe in uh, that multilateral trading system. So we believe that uh, both countries, by working t together, we can make contribution to, to world peace, stability, and the common development. Russia has this Eurasian economic community. China originally proposed the idea of Belt and Road Initiative. It is supposed to be a global connectivity. So what about the link between the two? And some say there are some difficulties implementing the idea into real projects on the ground. What is your thought, Mr. Secretary General? Well, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about uh, the challenges. Okay. And uh, what, you know, may the challenges be? Mm -hmm. uh, in my view, uh, the growing protectionism and the unilateralism, uh, you know, they are endangering uh, the world economic recovery mm -hmm. and uh, undermining uh, multilateral trading system with WTO at its core mm -hmm. uh, impose a threat uh, you know, to the world, to the countries in the world. So I think China, Russia as a major economies in the world should work together I see. To, uh, to safeguard uh, the multilateral uh, trading uh, mm. regime and also uphill the open economy and fight uh, protectionism. You think they're going to do it? I mean, Mr. Secretary General, as you said earlier, state visit by Russian president to China likely, and then as CEO summit, Chinese president going to interact with the Russian president, of course, during that occasion. Are they likely to focus on what you have just talked about, to be able to safeguard multilateral is China and Russia work together, Mr. Secretary General? Yes, I think this uh, always, you know, on the agenda of the, of the meetings between the two leaders, you know, 
between President Putin and also President Xi Jinping, because both countries, you know, have a worldwide vision. Yes. And uh, every country, small or big in the world, has a role to play uh, on the international stage, and uh, major countries uh, should take responsibility, make more contribution to the peace, stability, security, development in the world. Mm. China, Russia, the two countries are on that track. Mm. So uh, I'm very confident in the relationship between the two countries. I think mm. this relationship you know, can benefit the peace, stability, and also the development in the world. Yeah, before we go, two more questions. One is about Russia is going to host the World Cup. And you see a lot of efforts made by Russia over the past few years, despite sanctions, trying to put itself back onto the map. How much will these efforts, from your perspective, Mr. Secretary General, be able to help Russia to be more functioning on multilateral platforms? Well, World Cup is, uh, I think, uh, has uh, already uh, catch the eyes of the world. Are you a soccer uh, fan? Yes. <laughs> so I, you know, to my knowledge, everything you know, goes very smoothly so far as the preparation for the yes. World Cup, mm -hmm. you know, uh, by Russia, and uh, they have my all the blessing. I wish all the best for the people in Russia to have a very successful. Game. Uh, not only blessing, but I guess event. you will be one of the next, viewers. Next month will be uh, not only big man for Russia, I think for the whole world. So mm. everybody in the world should support Russia to, to have a successful game. Mm. Now, Mr. Secretary General, as you may know, China is in full gear preparing for the SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Qingdao early June. I mean, now I understand you are working as the Secretary General of the Global Forum for Asia, but still, as a seasoned diplomat, as someone who has devoted decades of your time on multilateral platforms, what do you think could be some of the key for success when it comes to this SCO summit? I think that uh, uh, the good world governance, economy, and uh, counterterrorism, you know, these uh, uh, important international issues will be on the agenda. And uh, I think just now we talk about uh, how people, they, you know, they look at the world the situation. So the good governance for the globe is very, very important. Mm. So you know that uh, the pillar, uh, role, rule of law, is the pillar uh, of globalization. Is global uh, governance, good governance, how people think about the governance, how effective that the, the global governance uh, can be. So this is the question must be answered. There must be solutions. So we got to, you know, to, uh, to bring people together and make sure that we have good understanding mm. what is the rule of law for the international order and uh, how can we uh, come up with ideas to strengthen the good governance of the, of the world. So this is something I think uh, we expect answers from, uh, from uh, Qingdao Summit. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary General, Thank for you. sharing your time out of your very busy schedule here Thank you. in St. Petersburg. All Thank the best. You. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank really you. appreciate sure. it. Sure, thank you. And you have been watching my interview with Mr. Li Baodong, the Secretary General of the Boa Forum for Asia. This is our special program coming from St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. I'm Tianwei. We'll be back after this.